Hello and welcome to another episode of the Restore Mentor. And on today's episode, we're going to fix the digitizer on this Nintendo DSi XL, I believe. Um, as you can see, the screen's um pretty scratched up, and it's not working actually, sort of very well. You can it sometimes works, but very inconsistent. Um, so yeah, we're gonna try and uh, take it apart and repair the digitizer. Hope you enjoy. First things you want to do if there's a cartridge in the uh, slot, just remove that. As there's actually a screw underneath the cartridge slot. Um, then you can see there's four little rubber grommets that you're going to have to remove. Um, the easiest way to do that I found is just a, a pointy uh, sharp knife and just hook them out. Um, and then there's obviously various other screws as you can see all the screws of Philips head so no need to worry about special screwdrivers Struggling to remove the battery uh, at this point, um, which is pretty stupid. Uh, yeah, you just want to hook it under the side and use a bit more force. Um, I'll get there in the end. Just using a uh, pointy object, I like in this case I use a knife. You can be quite rough with the little rubber pads, they're pretty resilient. Just make sure they don't flick when you take them out because they have a tendency to want to go flying. Um, yeah, as you can see, they come out pretty easy. Once all the pads are removed, um, you can remove the four Phillips headed uh, screws. They're all the same size, the four under the pads. Um, you just need to be careful. The uh, one under the cartridge slot is actually smaller and the two each side of the cartridge slot are smaller as you'll see just uh, in a moment. Next up, remove the two screws each side of the cartridge slot. Um, the screw in the middle underneath where the cartridge sits uh, is actually a different length than the two each side. So you just want to keep it separate and remember the order they go back in. As you can see, the screw that goes in the middle underneath the cartridge slot is quite a bit shorter than the screws at each side of it. Be careful not to lose the small screw as uh, it is needed and it is very easy to mislay. Next up it's time to remove the actual rear cover uh, you don't want to do this too heavy handedly. Uh, I'd say I've never done it before, but you just want to ease it off gently. Don't force it as you will break the plastic clips. Once you get one side off, it's just a case of working your hand round and just, just loosening it. Like I say, don't force it as you will break some. And also, to remember, just remember, um, there is 
a ribbon cable, or two ribbon cables underneath, so you don't want to pull it too hard and rip them out. That's obviously this will easily uh, damage them as well. I just carefully at this point ease the knife underneath just to help sort of prise the two sections apart. Like I say, don't force it, it will come apart. Now lift the lid up and you can actually see the two ribbon cables that are just push fit onto the main circuit board you just want to gently ease them off one at a time um, and literally they just pull upwards rather than sliding out There you have it, that's the bottom section completely removed. You can set that aside now, as you won't need that again. Um, and that gives you good access then to start removing the screws, well, the ribbon cables first from the uh, circuit board underneath and just showing you the screw locations. Each one is in a white circle, um, so you can easily see them. Uh, and they're all the same size bar the one at the top right hand corner I believe is slightly longer and there's also a different color silver rather than black There's two pieces of tape just holding the smaller ribbon cables on um, One as you can see I'm just peeling off at the moment just stick them somewhere handy because you can reuse them when you come to reassemble and that's the other one just carefully ease it off they're just there to keep the two smaller cables in place to stop them uh, coming loose these two smaller um, ribbon cables are by far the hardest ones to remove and the easiest ones to break uh, this top left hand I think it's for the top screen can be left in place uh, yeah, just be really careful when taking the two of the smaller cables out as you can easily break the connections. Here's a closer view of me just prizing the uh, ribbon cables from their connections. I just prize, there's a little black locking tab you just need to flip up. I find it easier this with a pair of uh, tweezers and you just tease it out like say it doesn't need too much force um if you force it you're going to break it but you just want to like be really gentle take your time and uh, you'll find they come out relatively easy If you're trying this yourself at home, it'd probably be easier with a magnifying glass um, and also not having a camera directly in front of your eyes. Um, but yeah, like I say, just take your time and uh, you'll get there.
once you've disconnected all the ribbon cables, it's time to start taking the screws holding the main circuit board down out. I was trying to be sneaky and if you look, the um, the ribbon cable to the right, I believe it's the uh, control cable for the controllers on the, or the buttons, should I say, on the other side. Um, I was trying to leave it in place, but it turns out you have to remove that one as well, just to make it easier to lift up the board to take the screen and the digitizer out, as you'll see shortly. This is the moment I realised to get access to the digitising screen. I had to remove the power cable, I believe. Um, it's a little bit awkward. You just need to prise the cables out of a little clip they're in and then lift up the white connector. Um, yes, it lifts upwards, not slides. It doesn't slide out. Uh, so just be careful and ease it up. And then also, the ribbon cable above has to come out which is taken out um, the same as the other cables And that's everything disconnected enough to be able to slide the whole digitizer and screen assembly out from underneath the main board. Like I say, just pull it out carefully, make sure not to rip any of the ribbon cables. And that's it, as simple as that. Um, you can put the actual DS to one side now to be able to work on uh, reassembling the new digitizer onto the actual screen. At this stage, it's a good idea just to check the actual um, new part you've ordered is the correct one. Uh, this one cost me, I believe it's three pounds off eBay. Just make sure the uh, the cables are all in the right position and it's the right size. Um, and then the next step is to prise off the yellow or whatever color your DS happens to be bezel from round the actual digitizer. It's actually quite brittle, so just take your time. It's only stuck down, but you don't want to damage it if you can help it. I actually split it slightly, but it was still usable. Just work your way around and it'll peel off and hopefully you can reuse the actual sticky, I guess, double-sided tape that it's held on with.
Next step is to actually peel the digitizer, the one you're going to change um, off of the actual screen. It's not stuck on too firmly, but just be careful you don't want to damage the, the screen. Just work your way from one corner, as you can see. It helps when your fingernails are a little bit long like mine are currently. Um, and just peel it up off. Um, like I say, don't force it. Just take your time and it'll come off. As you can see, when you get it up a certain distance, there's a rubber gasket, which is actually stuck underneath. You want to leave that in place as you can reuse it because your new digitizer won't, won't come with it. So just ease it off and then position it back. As you can see, I'll do shortly um, round the screen and then you can use it to stick the new digitizer to. Next up, remove the protective film on your new digitizer. It's quite hard to tell. I struggled anyway with my eyesight. Um, what if it had plastic on both sides? Um, I think they normally do come with plastic both sides. So I find it easier to take it off. Well, all of it off, because the last thing you want to do is leave a layer stuck between the, uh, the screen and the uh, digitizer. So yeah, just check it carefully and then seat it gently down on the existing gasket. Um, try and centralize it as best as you can, uh, but you can always uh, sync up or um, yeah, reset the uh, touch screen. Uh, but you want to just try and get it as close to the middle or close to center as you can. Next you want to re-fix the original bezel around the outside of the screen. Try and centralise it again, um, just in the right position. As you see shortly in the video, um, this part is where I slightly come unstuck. Um, as when I re-put the two halves together, the bezel wasn't quite lining up. So you'll see my solution um, shortly in the video. It's now time to slide the whole assembly back in underneath the main board. Just be careful again on reassembling. Make sure you don't trap any cables underneath. Just slide it in, uh, like I say, underneath gently and you'll be fine. Um, you'll see I have to remove it again shortly because of the aforementioned uh, bezel problem. But um, yeah, it's all good experience and hopefully me making mistakes will help you guys in the future if you choose to do the job yourself. As you can see when inspecting the um, the opposite side, 
bezel wasn't quite seated in the right position and just needed to come down a little bit. Um, so what I turn out doing is taking it off, um, fixing the actual screen into place um, loosely and then just sliding it in from the front edge. Um, it seemed to work okay, this technique. Uh, it's a little bit fiddly, but at least that way you know it's actually lined up in the correct position. Next up, you want to uh, reinsert all the screws you've taken out. Just remember the one odd one at the top right hand side. Um, yeah, silver in color. Um, don't over tighten them because you will strip the plastic. Um, and just, yeah, make sure nothing's trapped when you refit them. At this point, you want to refit all of the ribbon cables you took off earlier. Uh, just remember which ones are press ones and which ones are slide in ones. Um, yeah, you have to push quite firm on the little power cable at the bottom. Just make sure you go up the right way up. Um, as you can see, I was just checking. Um, and yeah, just work your way through and carefully put them all back in there. Uh, locations. Don't forget to press down the little black um, locking tabs when you've got them seated. Don't force them, just uh, yeah, push them down gently and they lock into place.
sorry about the camera work on certain parts of this. It's kind of difficult to, uh, yeah, focus on the sliding of the cables back into place and making sure you've got the uh, actual holding the DS in frame. Um, yeah, I hope you can sort of see the gist of the idea. I did try and keep it under the camera, but like I say, it's actually quite difficult to multitask. Next, uh, at this point, it's always good if you're happy with all the cables uh, being back in the correct location. Just uh, hold the battery in position. Make sure you've got the positive and the negative around the right way. And then uh, just power on and check if everything's working before you go any further with uh, the reassembly. Luckily, this one fired straight up. Um, and the touch screen appears to be working as well so um, yeah just worth checking at this point rather than getting everything back together and then having to go back and take it all apart again don't forget to just stick the two little bits of tape back on the small cables just to hold them in place um, I'm not sure it does too much but it's worth putting back on there After one final check of everything and you're happy with uh, all the locations and uh, everything's taped back down as it should be, it's time to put the back cover back in position. Uh, it just clips in. It's actually easier to get back on than it was uh, to remove. Um, you just will obviously connect the two ribbon cables which just push back into situ. They actually feel a little bit loose but... Um, you press down obviously not too hard and they seem to seat nicely um, and then you just want to press the two halves back together as you'll see job nearly completed now um, now it's a satisfying part of just reinserting all the uh, rear cover screws making sure you just get the uh, obviously the small one I mentioned earlier into the middle of the cartridge lot the four outer ones are all the same and you've got the two little ones each side of the cartridge lot as well um just get them in the right order again don't over tighten them uh and yeah nearly there
Next, uh, obviously don't forget to reinsert the battery. I think it only goes in one way when you've got the cover on. Um, but yeah, just worth checking uh, again the positives and the negatives are the right way around. Next up, that uh, pesky bezel. Um, it's probably easier to have put it on early and left it on, but I did struggle to line it up. Um, so it's doable this way. You just have to gently ease it back in underneath. There's a slight lip on the casing and you just press it in. Um, it's a bit of a faff, but it is actually doable and it will stay in situ. You can just press it down. And now after all your hard work, Time to re-fire up the system. As you can see, it started straight up. Um, the touchscreen's working. All you gotta do now is just recalibrate the touchscreen to make sure it's all synced up um, as it should be. And uh, yeah, not too much of a difficult job to do. If you've got a bit of confidence, um, I'm sure you can manage as uh, I managed to do it. Um, I hope this video helped. Uh, like I say, if you could like, subscribe and comment, um, it would be really uh, helpful for me to grow this channel. Uh, any suggestions in the comments as well about videos you'd like to see, I'm sure I can uh, give them a go. Uh, thanks for your time and uh, goodbye.